So in passing, there's three things we're gonna be focusing on that are most important. If I had to reduce passing into the three things you should just hyper-focus on, is footwork, spacing, meaning how far your platform is from your body, and angles. If you take care of those three things, no matter what variation you do, you're gonna pass really well. Okay, we're gonna first learn our passing stance. This is called medium posture. You're gonna put your feet shoulder width or slightly wider. Now you're gonna stagger one foot in front of the other so that it forms a rectangle. The okay, next step is I'm gonna squat down into a half squat. Okay, that means just above parallel. All right, now I'm gonna lean forward about 40 to 60 degrees. Shoulders should be generally above my knees, knees generally above my toes. Now we'll talk about what we do with our arms. So without getting to our stance, our arms generally gonna be about shoulder width apart, palms facing up, and then slight bend in our elbows here, okay? So if we combine those two, it should look like this. You're, you're ready to receive the ball here. Okay, some people are a little higher, some people are a little lower. Everyone's body is a little different, okay? What I don't recommend is starting here or here. So you wanna find that happy medium ground. Now we'll form our platform. In general, we wanna cross our fingers and then put our thumbs together so that you're, they're parallel, okay? Now as you get more advanced, you can experiment with different hand formations as long as something is locked together. All right, so there's so many different combinations, but you're, this has to be locked so that when someone hits hard, this, it's not gonna separate. So let's go ahead and put our platform together. This is called our platform. Now the way we expand the surface area is we point your thumbs down. You see how that opens up your wrist and you turn your elbows inside out. That expands the surface area. You want as flat of an area as possible. Now you're gonna touch right where you wear your wrist watch. This is called the sweet spot. This is where we wanna contact the ball, ideally. Okay, not too high here on the forearms and not low where it's bony, but on the sweet spot, so pretty much where you wear your watch. Now let's put it all together. When I say medium posture, let's get down. Squat down, knees over toes. Okay, we're gonna forward lean with the torso, straight back, shoulders over knees, hands out. Now form your platform together. Make sure your elbow's locked out. Okay, separate, platform together. Separate, pop them together, separate, good. Relax, shake it out. Now we're gonna talk about how to form your platform together. The most common mistake we see in volleyball is a two or three motion platform. One, two, all right, that's called praying. Or we, what we call the Batman. Or the pop and lock, right? There's so many different versions, but it has to be one motion. You need to touch your wrists and elbows at the same time. Okay, now we're gonna talk about passing motion and then we'll break out and actually get a chance to pass the ball. How many of you, when you first learned volleyball, were taught that you should use your legs to pass? Anybody? Okay, that's a lot of us. I was taught that too in high school until I started playing at a high level and people were hitting too fast for me to go down up. Eric Shoji, one of the best liberos in the world. They use a lot of arm movement, okay? The game has evolved to where you can actually use the energy of the ball more efficiently if you redirect the ball versus add energy. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you more about arm passing than leg passing, all right? So when I form my platform, I'm gonna form it at my knee height. This is the optimal range for balance and movement, right? If I form it too high, I meet the ball too early and it's gonna hit me in the chest. If I form it too low, I'm not gonna be able to move in this position, okay? So I'm gonna form it at my knee, contact the ball at my waist, and then finish at my chest, okay? That's my finishing move. So we're gonna go through that motion, the coach is gonna walk around, but you're gonna do this for about a minute. I'm gonna get in my medium posture, I'm gonna shoot at my knees, contact at the waist, and then finish at my chest. Knee, waist, sternum. Knee, waist, chest, however you wanna call it. You want a small range of motion. Keep working, form it right at your knees. As the ball's moving faster and all I have time to do is this, I'm already setting an upward angle for the ball. Okay, if I shoot down here, I might get a bigger range of motion for more power, but the ball's gonna go forward. If I shoot too high, ball's gonna go behind me. So at the highest level, wherever it is, if I'm moving, boom, I'm, I need to get in the habit of shooting at my knee so the ball always goes up. 
Okay, we're gonna get into a partner drill. This is a great drill you can do with a partner without a net. So he's gonna chest pass, he's gonna aim at my waist. I'm gonna shoot at my knees, try to contact it in the sweet spot at my waist, and then finish at my chest here, okay? So a little bit uneven to my platform, that's a good chance for me to check. Okay, it's a little better. Okay, so if I do it correctly, it should go on top of my partner. All right, let's go, partner up. Let's spread out this way, guys. Let's spread out, spread down. Good, nice movement, Daphne. Good to see you again. The next stage of the, the drill is working on angles. So we talked about passing dead center. So what, he's gonna, what I'm gonna do is uh, Kai's gonna eventually toss it to one of the knees. He's gonna work on the angle, okay? So go and toss here. If I'm still learning, then tell him I wanna work only on my right side first and then switch every five and then do left side second, okay? So I'm gonna say I want you to focus on my ref, left side. I'm gonna shoot and I'm gonna try to angle this left shoulder into the right knee. That's how I create my angle. I don't want to twist or break. I don't want to try to cycle it back. I'm going to think about platform by getting my opposite shoulder to the opposite knee. So I'm trying to get my left shoulder here and I'm holding, okay? Now, we want to keep things really simple. Let me know if this is simple or not, ready? <laughs> you want to make sure you keep things really simple. But I'm working on angle, so shoulder to knee, freeze to your target. All right, let's go. Good, nice movement, Daphne. Good to see you again. We're gonna learn passing footwork. So if you focus on one motion, knee, waist, sternum, freeze to your target, at almost any level, you're gonna pass like 70% of the balls that you see, okay? I think sometimes people use advanced volleyball as a reason to break fundamentals, but the best players in the world look very boring to watch. Everything's very simple. We wanna keep things simple. Okay, now we're gonna work on passing footwork. There's three types of footwork that will get to 90% of the balls and then 10% we'll teach you tomorrow. So let's get into our medium posture. If I can't pass it within knee range, then I need to shuffle. Shuffle just means moving both feet at the same time. So if I'm gonna move this way, I just shuffle, which means I push off of my outside leg to move my other leg and then I can move both legs, okay? So let's try that together. On your own time, you're just gonna generally experiment what it feels like to shuffle back and forth. Okay, go ahead. Okay, now if it's outside my knees and I need to move a little further, so shuffle is if it's pretty close but outside my knees, okay? If it's beyond that, then you need to step and then shuffle. If I'm going to my right or your left, I step, shuffle. Step, shuffle. So we're going this way, I'm gonna do it with you. Ready, go, step, shuffle, okay? And then walk back, ready? Go, step, shuffle. Good, walk back, go, step, shuffle, good. Last time, go. Step, shuffle, good. Okay, relax. Two things we need to be a little better about. You gotta pretend like you're step shuffling under the net, okay? When I'm moving, I should not be able to touch the net. Some of us, right, are gonna get clothesline. We should not be riding a horse. We should be a sand crab, okay? So let's try that. Let's try to keep your head really level. Ready, same direction, go. Good, walk back. Go. Good, much better. Let's get one more time. Nice job. One more time. Go. Good. All right, shake it out. Now what I want you to do is move with your hands apart. 
and don't form your platform until you land. A lot of people make the mistake of putting the platform together first and then moving and then they golf swing which carries the ball to the side. So move with your hands apart, head level. So try to really get balance 50-50 or 60-40 and not trying to let your momentum carry side. Let's get one more drill and we'll get water. So same drill except we're gonna work on shuffle footwork. So we're gonna work on one side. I'm just gonna step shuffle. He's gonna uh, toss it generally right here, okay? Hold your platform, reset. Notice that my head's really level. Form my angle and I'm holding my platform, okay? We're not trying to win the open gym contest. Right? There's just so much excessive movement. Keep it simple. Good volleyball is really boring to watch. Keep that in mind, right? The people that bounce in the hitting lines probably aren't gonna get a lot of kills in the games, all right? All right, let's go, partner up. The real test of we were truly focusing is can we do the same thing when a coach is hitting at you? And I think a lot of times we make the mistake of working hard when we want to work hard or trying to do the things we need to do when we want to do, but by the time it's too late, right? The true test of your ability is regardless of the situation, can I make it intense for myself and still apply what I'm trying to learn on regardless of whether it's easy or hard, right? You can't pick and choose when you want to work hard. So when we do do the live game drill on the court, we wanna make sure we always keep that in context. So I've had the coaches here. Let's have one coach in the left back, middle back, target. So the goal is hand the ball to the coach's left side, go behind them so they can transition from here to here. So your goal is after you pass, hustle, hand the ball to the coach. And if, if you have to wait there, just wait there, right? Just leave the ball here, grab it so they can enter right away. It's gonna make the drill go a lot faster. We're just gonna alternate who's passing Okay, and then KB is going to fill in, so whoever doesn't pass is going to fill in. And you see how they're hustling back? We get tons of reps. You see, we're getting a rep every three to four seconds. Oh yeah, Lau, let's go. The veteran. All right, let's give our coaches a round of applause. That was good. So our goal is get tons of reps and it's up to you guys to run that. You guys want to empower the coaches to give you lots and lots of feedback. Great job, Our, that first five minutes was just learning the drill, learning how to be a good practice player, helping the coach run the drill. We need to be balanced before and we need to be balanced after. The goal is not to move as you're passing. There's a time and place for that, but the more off balance I am, the less control I have of the ball. So when I'm shuffling, balance before, balance after. Try not to move and pass at the same time, at least in this instance, okay? And coaches, you can toss it with a little bit more pace now and try to make sure they pass on like the 20 foot line and they move left to right. All right, let's go. Balance before and after. So now you want fast technique and now you need to call the ball because the ball is moving faster it, you can crash into each other if you don't call it, okay? Right. Now one thing I want you to notice is how little movement there is, okay? They're really simple with their body, but they're balanced before and after. So let's focus on that now. Balance before and after. All 
All right, let's give the coach another round of applause. That was pretty good. A little story before our water break the power of counting uh, my brother six years older unfortunately was a, a, a not the nicest older brother one thing he used to do when we had chores when my parents were at work and we we're in the summer hanging out at home he would say things like I bet you can't do the dishes in less than five minutes oh yeah <laughs> next thing I bet you can't sweep the floor in less than ten minutes oh yeah and it wasn't until 10 years later that I realized he was counting down so I could do the chores for him. But who's laughing now? Because I can beat him up now. Haha. <laughs> now, we're actually, he's a really great older brother right now, but the power of counting. So we're going to uh, get a water break and work on some setting, and then we'll finish off on our least favorite skill, which is hitting. Okay? All right, let's bring it in. Elevate on me, elevate on three. One, two, three. Elevate. elevate. 